All right, everybody. So in this video, we're going to be talking about oxidative phosphorylation. That includes the electron transport chain, which is shown here, and something called chemiosmosis, which is shown here. And we'll talk about each of these steps. The way this is going to work is we're going to have some energy coming from uh, both glycolysis and citric acid cycle. Those are going to be in the form of NADH, shown here, and FADH2 shown here. And these are those high electron, high energy electron carriers. They're going to then pass those along to the electron transport chain. This will then build up a different type of energy called a proton motive force. Proton motive force. And that energy is going to power the movement of these hydrogens across, which will then enable us to generate ATP from ADP and inorganic phosphate. Okay, so that's the general picture of it. Let's take a look at this thing in action. First of all, I want to say um, <clears throat> a little bit about where these um, high energy electron carriers are coming from. So remember glycolysis, glycolysis, equals 2 NADH, so remember where these are coming from, and then we have the Krebs cycle is going to give us 6 NADH, right, and then 2 FADH2. That's total per, per glucose molecule, all right, oops, glucose molecule, per glucose. All right, so let's take a look at how this all works. So first of all, <clears throat> glycolysis is outside of the um, mitochondria. It's in the uh, cytoplasm. So these NADH have to get shuttled inside the mitochondria. And the Krebs cycle occurs in the matrix. So those are, are already there ready to go. But just letting you know where everything's occurring. Now the electron transport chain is occurring within the uh, inner mitochondrial membrane and you're going to see that uh, things take place on both sides of that membrane in the intermembrane space right here shown out here in the darker color and then in the matrix shown here in the lighter color okay, so get your bearings and then if you were to draw uh, another membrane out here uh, you know way out here somewhere this would be the cytoplasm Okay, so hopefully you, you get your bearings and you understand what we're looking at now as far as the cell goes. Okay, so let's say we have generated all these electron carriers and we're ready to put them into action and, and utilize their energy. I just want to mention a, a note about uh, the, the participants of the electron transport chain. And first of all, let's go ahead and depict our membrane. So here's our membrane. Remember, this is a lipid bilayer. We're familiar with those now. And within that lipid bilayer, we have different, um, different proteins um, and other molecules within that. Um, and in that particular case, um, these different proteins and molecules, because they're not all proteins, are going to shuttle hydrogen ions across. And we'll talk a little bit more about this in a second. So we have a couple here. Uh, and then another one, say, here, and another one here, and I'll, I'll get into naming these in a second. Um, and then we have another one here, and finally one here. And then way down here, I'm going to draw something else, which we'll get to in a little bit. Okay, but we'll kind of ignore this one on the end here. All right, so what are these? Well, first of all, we have four um, complexes. These are big complexes, and these are made of protein. So there's one, there's two, there's three, and there's four. So four complexes, so four complexes. Okay. And then we have two other um, molecules that are not really proteins, but we'll, we'll go, well, one that's not a protein, one that is, but they're different from these big complexes. And in many ways but we won't get into that detail so one is ubiquinone and we just label it with a q right and the other is called cytochrome c and i'm just going to write it up here cytochrome 
C, and we abbreviate it Cyte C, C Y T C, and then it's actually Cytochrome C. And there's a whole family of Cytochromes, which is pretty pretty cool stuff if you dig into it further. All right, so back to all of these um, different participants. In this particular case, we have high energy electrons, and we'll draw them in red. So here we have just one electron. And where these are coming from are FADH2 and NADH. Right? OK, so let's see what happens here. Um, we're going to have an electron coming from NADH right here deposited into or passed along to complex number one. And it's important now. What we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about what they do and why this is important. What they're going to do is they're going to actually power. There's energy in this electron. They're going to power the movement of H plus ions. So we call these protons or hydrogen ions or even hydrogen cations. Any of those will work. So in here we have some H pluses. Right. I'll draw them around here. I'll draw them around the... Uh, set of pens here but a lot of H pluses these are again in the matrix and then what's going to happen is that high energy electron is going to power the movement of them of them across so now we'll, let's go ahead and follow that electron that electron gets passed along and it gets passed along and we're just going to continue kind of passing it from one um, big unit big molecule to another right or complex to another and it just gets passed along and as it does that it's going to lose energy along the way so it kind of loses its energy well where does that energy go right don't forget it doesn't just disappear I don't remember what color I used exactly what's actually happening is we're going to actually pump hydrogens across so this is important here we're pumping all these hydrogens across right we're really building this up. Now think of water behind a dam. That's really what's happening. We're putting all that water up there. Now this, these aren't water molecules, but you get the idea. We're going to just stockpile all this up here. It should be noted as well that um, the FADH2 also contributes its electrons. It does it in a little bit different way. It does it a little bit downstream. No big deal. Just letting you know that it's a little bit different the way FADH2 deposits its electrons into the electron transport chain. Okay, but the main idea here is that they're going to then build up this really strong sort of uh, force across the top here. Okay, now that's important because that has a name and I wrote it over here. That is called the proton motive force. So over here I'll try and scribble it in here. Proton you guys should be writing this as well. Proton, motive, and force. So the energy from these electrons is now transformed into a new energy, and that is called the proton motive force. Now remember something you probably already remember from <clears throat> a previous example where we talked about movement across a membrane. There was this aspect of diffusion that relies on high concentration of molecules moving to lower concentration. So that is an important concept to understand. Well, what's what's going on here? Well, this is energy here. And here we're going to give that a name. We call it proton motive force, right? Okay, and so it's this energy that's, that's sort of the, the water behind the dam that's going to power the generation of tons of ATP. All right, so that is the electron transport chain right here right right here electron transport chain and its main role is to build up the h pluses now we'll take a look just briefly at the uh, chemiosmosis and what's going to happen here is all those um, hydrogens are going to move across and i'll get to this electron here in one second all right so now all these hydrogens are moving back across and think of like water kind of growing through the dam and they're turning a, a rotor, you know, or a turbine. Well, that energy is going to go, f we're going to transform it from a proton motive force to a kinetic energy 
into a chemical energy. So we'll go ahead and use a different color now. Now we're going to form something new. This is energy from proton motive force to kinetic energy to ATP. So here's ADP plus a phosphate group. We'll just draw a circle around it. And that's going to give us ATP. There's our energy. That's cool. So now we have our final output for the whole shebang. All right, so back to the hydrogens. Now what's happening here are all these hydrogens are coming across. All these hydrogens are coming across. And we're like, okay, well, that's great. But what about that electron? So let's go look at that. So that electron here, there's one here, and we have a bunch of them, right? A bunch of electrons coming. Now what they're going to do is they're going to be bound to an oxygen. So an oxygen here. And we'll just draw it as O2 because that's the normal state it's in. That oxygen will pick up the electrons. will pick up the electrons. And it will also bind to the hydrogens. And that will give us water. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, what color? We'll try this. So that will give us water. H-O-H. H2O. All right. So we end up with water as well. And then if you go back and look at the overall formula, you notice uh, that part of the formula or equation is accounted for. Okay. All right, so electrons are powering the movement of hydrogens across into the intermembrane space. That provides us with something called a proton motive force, proton motive force. That force is an energy that will then be converted into this kinetic energy that drives the creation of ATP, which is a chemical potential energy. And it's important to note that we get about 28, I'll put it over here, 28 ATP from this. So if we do the math, 28 plus the four we had before is about 32 total ATP per glucose molecule. All right, that's a lot. That's pretty cool. All right, so let's uh, not, not finish there. Let's go ahead and see if we can watch a couple of videos to just sort of kind of encapsulate all this one more time. And we'll tie it into the video from your book. So here we go. Well, let's watch this. Most of the energy harvested from organic molecules during glycolysis and the citric acid cycle is stored in NADH and FADH2. These molecules give up their high energy electrons in the third phase of cellular respiration, oxidative phosphorylation, where most of the cell's ATP fuel is produced. The electron transport chain is an array of molecules, mostly proteins, built into the inner membrane of the mitochondria. NADH gives up its high-energy electrons to the first complex in the electron transport chain. The electrons move from one member of the chain to the next, giving up their energy as they are pulled from NADH toward highly electronegative oxygen. The energy given up by the flow of electrons is used to pump hydrogen ions from the mitochondrial matrix into the intermembrane space. Oxygen captures the electrons in the very last step in electron transport. The last complex adds a pair of electrons to an oxygen atom and two hydrogen ions, forming water. The electron transport chain has used the energy of moving electrons to pump hydrogen ions into the intermembrane space. This buildup of hydrogen ions, like water behind a dam, stores the potential energy that was originally in the bonds of glucose molecules. The backed up hydrogen ions give up their energy when they diffuse through a special protein in the membrane called ATP synthase. As hydrogen ions flow down their concentration gradient, ATP synthase captures their energy to make ATP. This mode of ATP production is called oxidative phosphorylation because it is powered by the transfer of electrons to oxygen. All right, and we'll watch one more video here. This is just a quick one here, just to show you um, ATP synthase and how cool it is. Hydrogen ions flow back across the membrane through a turbine. Much like water through a dam, the flow of hydrogen ions spins the turbine, 
which activates the production of ATP.